Fatty rice is the major source of not only food, but income for Vietnam. The average Vietnamese person consumes three quarters of a pound of rice a day. Mekong Delta alone accounts for more than 50% of the patty produced rice per year. It includes 12 provinces and two thirds of the land is used for agriculture and aquaculture. This staple helped the country overcome the food crisis of the 1980s and increase their earnings from overseas exports. The labor intensive work made weed and pest control extremely important for rice production. This problem, plus the demand for larger yields, has caused Vietnamese farmers to adapt to new industrialized methods, including the use of pesticides and inorganic fertilizers in the late 1990s. However, this solution has created more problems with the dilemma of the farmer's health, including the natural water sources. According to a case study in 1995, farmers in the Mekong Delta reported cases of rashes, eye irritation, gastrointestinal disorders, and headaches. Doctors linked these symptoms to bronchial asthma and pulmonary disorders. According to the Pesticides Action Network North America Update Services, in an interview with farmers in 1995 from the Mekong Delta, out of the total amount of pesticides used, over half were organ phosphates, which included methylpyrithian, monocrotophos, and methamidophos. According to the World Health Organization, almost 20% of these chemicals are classified as extremely dangerous, especially methylpyrithian. These chemicals have shown to disrupt the soil, which affects future crop yields. The mishandling of the pesticides, including storage, application, and disposal, led to contamination of water canals and ducts. The heavy rain season causes the paddies to overflow their boundaries and contaminate surrounding areas. The high levels of toxins limit rice to a monocultural crop and prevents fish and shrimp from being harvested, which limits the food production and sales overall. The question whether Vietnam will be able to support the continued growth of its population and its exporting ventures come into play. Alternate methods must be found to better control pests without killing the environment but still sustaining the large crop yield and satisfying the population and trade demands.